Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep slash batch cooking video. So this batch cooking video was done the week of Christmas, but I knew because I was going to be making so much stuff, I would have leftovers for the entire week because I'm the only one that really stayed keto over Christmas. So I had all this other stuff that I made non-keto for the rest of the family. However, this lasted me the whole week and I hope you guys had a very Merry Christmas. But let's get on to the video. I hope it gives you some inspiration and motivation to get in the kitchen and get to cooking. All right, so we are going to start with boiled eggs. I always put one cup of water in my Instant Pot. I always use my Instant Pot to boil eggs because it's just the easiest. And I'm only boiling six because I learned my lesson. I always make too many and then they go to waste. And boiling eggs is one of the easiest things to do. So... I put it on sealing, I just press the egg button, I cook mine for three minutes, and then I put them in an ice bath after they're done. Sometimes I'll do four minutes if I do more eggs, but six, three's plenty. After they're done, I do a quick release, and then like I said, I put those eggs in an ice bath for five minutes. After five minutes, you can peel them, put them in bags just like that, Super ridiculously easy and the shells come off so simply. They literally like slide off of the egg. It's amazing. Next up, we're going to be preparing a ham because like I said, this was kind of my Christmas prep, but I ate it all week. So that ham was a spiral ham, a little over eight and a half pounds. It was already fully cooked. So all we had to do is kind of heat it up in a 275 degree oven. And I think it was like 12 to 15 minutes per pound. And I always like to take the juice of the ham and put it in the bottom of the casserole dish. I just cook my ham in a casserole dish. I don't do anything fancy. Um, but spiral hams are my absolute favorite. I don't use the glaze in them because that is nothing but pure sugar. So throw those away and I'll show you how to make some really good keto version uh, glaze. I always cover mine with a whole bunch of foil before I put it in the oven. And then with the glaze, this is Dat Keto Ladies Glaze. So you're going to, on a medium heat, put in one stick of butter, one cup of brown sugar, whatever brown sugar that you choose to use, one cup of sugar-free syrup. I just use pancake syrup from Walmart, if you want a cleaner version, there's all kinds of cleaner versions out there. And then the sugar, the brown sugar, I just use Swerve. You can use monk fruit, you can use whatever you want. But I just mix that up really well. I let that come to a boil and I actually turned it up to about medium high heat. Once it starts coming to a boil, just like that, you want it to be just like that. Keep stirring it. I say stir it every like 30 seconds and then add a half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice. I will leave a link to Dat Keto Lady's recipe in the description box below. And then after that, you just let it boil, let it thicken up just a little bit, and then you just pour it over the entire ham. I even took some of the slices of ham and separated them a little bit just with my hands and that way all of that yummy goodness could get in between all of that ham see just like that y'all it's so good and that sauce or that glaze i guess i should say makes a whole bunch it is delicious i promise you you're gonna love it after you get all the glaze on there put it back in the oven for about 15 minutes it comes out this was, even the non-keto family was like, this ham is the best ham ever. So thank you so much, Dad Keto Lady, for making such an amazing recipe. Next up, we're going to be making some zucchini au gratin. This is delicious. If you have not had this, you're missing out. I've made this before. I'm going to use three zucchinis that I'm going to chop up and zucchinis have some moisture in them so you're going to want to lay them out on a paper towel and if you can see I did sprinkle them with salt. Salt will help get the moisture out. I just use that Mediterranean sea salt. I let them set for maybe 20 minutes and that really gets the moisture. It almost like draws the moisture out of the zucchini. 
While I let the zucchini sit, I prepared the onions. So that is a half an onion, and I just chopped it up finely. Doesn't matter how you chop it. Then in a saucepan, you're gonna wanna take two tablespoons of butter, melt that down, and then you're also gonna take a half a cup of heavy whipping cream, as well as some garlic powder. That was about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I also put in a fourth a teaspoon of nutmeg. And then I went ahead and added some minced garlic as well. So I just stirred that up while that simmered a little bit. I just added another paper towel, put it on top of that zucchini. And if you can see there how it's just absorbing that moisture from the zucchini that's what you want so that way this dish isn't too runny and then when that sauce comes to a boil you're going to eventually add some xanthan gum so i just added a fourth a teaspoon of xanthan gum that's the kind i use i get it at walmart and um, it just comes in those little packs i like it it works well for me Stir that up, let that thicken up just a little bit. I had that question, they asked what xanthan gum was. That's what it is, it's a thickening agent. And then I did several layers. So I did, I think, three layers. So I layered the zucchini, put some salt, put some pepper. That's just a nine by nine baking dish. And then I just sprinkled some cheddar cheese on top of that, as well as some mozzarella cheese. We're just going in with all kinds of cheeses. <laughs> like I said, I did about three layers, and on my third layer, I realized I forgot to add in the onions to those layers, so I just added it on top. Whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> so it still came out so good. It did not ruin it at all. And I did put salt and pepper on every single layer as well as cheese. And then the very top layer, you're going to add that sauce that we made. It doesn't look like it's enough, but just spread it out the best that you can and then let it bake. So we're going to bake this in an oven at 375 degrees for around 45 minutes. I promise you, like I said, it doesn't look like it goes very far, but it does. It ends up throughout the entire dish. And then after it cooked for about 30 minutes or 25 minutes, something like that, I took it out and I added Parmesan cheese to the top because, you know, it's the holidays and I love cheese. So I, I did that and then I put it back in for the rest of the amount of time, which is like another 20, 25 minutes, I think. And that's how it came out browned on the top, bubbly, beautiful. This was delicious. The zucchini was nice and tender, so good. Next up, we are making cauli mash. So I just took that saucepan, that was a pretty deep saucepan, added some water, that's probably around a cup of water, and then I'm using that uh, steamer basket, not really the steamer basket that goes with that pan, so we're making it work. It didn't fit very well. I cut up the cauliflower, cleaned it up. I let it steam just until it was tender enough where I could get a fork in it, and then you can squeeze yours in a towel or something to get the excess liquid out. I don't even find that necessary, to be honest with you. So I just took the cauliflower straight from that pan and put it into my food processor. And it, as you put it in there, my food processor isn't huge, so I did have to kind of shove it down with the spoon. Once I get it all in there, I added some of that Mediterranean feta cheese. Oh my gosh, y'all. If you love feta cheese and you love like the Mediterranean one like that, this was so good. That was about probably two to maybe three tablespoons of butter. I added some Mediterranean sea salt as well as some pepper. You guys, that feta cheese is so good. I added some garlic powder and I don't really measure my seasonings, but I do make sure I put enough. And once all that was in there, I just let the food processor do the work. You guys, this is like the simplest side dish ever. It doesn't have to be the holidays to make this either. I mean, okay, I've had people say, really, this does not taste like mashed potatoes. But once you're on keto long enough, it really does kind of, to me anyway, taste like mashed potatoes. And you can 
make it different flavors by using different cheeses or whatever. So good. Last but not least, we are getting into the dessert because you know it was the holidays and you guys know how much I love dessert. So we are going to be making some chocolate mousse pie and I cheated on the crust. I will show you that here in just a little bit. But for the filling, we are taking 16 ounces of cream cheese, room temperature. I had to microwave mine just a little bit. Uh, four tablespoons of butter. I went ahead and melted that. Four tablespoons of sour cream. I just wanted to throw a little reminder out there. You don't have to remember all these recipes. I will have them in the description box below. So that way you guys can enjoy these for yourself, your family. But you definitely want to try these. So I also added one tablespoon of vanilla extract, and you're probably thinking misty tablespoon. Yes, tablespoon. A half a cup of granulated erythritol, a half a cup of cocoa powder, and we are going to mix that with the hand mixer until it is nice and fluffy. Then about halfway through, I just like to go back and scrape the sides and then go ahead and go back in with my hand mixer and make sure that everything got incorporated. So after we get that done, we are going to take one cup of heavy whipping cream and then we are going to take our hand mixer and we are going to mix that to a soft peak. Once it's a soft peak, we are gonna go ahead and add one teaspoon of vanilla as well as two teaspoons of erythritol. You can use whatever kind of erythritol you choose to use. And then we are going to basically go back in with the hand mixer. And I mixed mine to where it's almost like a whipped topping uh, consistency. It says to do it um, until you get stiff peaks, but I went a little bit beyond that. And oh my gosh, you guys, this dessert was absolutely to die for. Make sure you fold it in though. Don't stir it in. Just fold it in. Just kind of whip your spoon around and then go back around because you don't want to lose the fluff. But that is the crust I chose to use. It is a pecan pie crust. I found that at Walmart. I think it was like, I think like eight or nine net carbs. I can't remember. But you know what? It was Christmas. I decided to go all out and it made my life easier. Probably be less net carbs if you did it yourself, but it is what it is. So as you see, I am just taking that filling and pouring it into that crust. Boy, did it fill it too. Oh my goodness, it was so delicious. And then I just flipped the top part of that lid um, of that pie crust and that just made the perfect dome uh, lid for that pie. Put it in the freezer, let it refrigerate for probably two to four hours, bada boom, bada bang. That was an amazing dessert for the holidays. All right, so that's going to be a wrap on this week's meal prep. I hope you guys found the motivation and inspiration that you were looking for to get into the kitchen and get to cook in for yourself and your family. I know this was more of like a holiday type meal prep with the ham and all that good stuff. However, you could still get some good ideas. And honestly, sometimes we just need a little motivation and inspiration and just a little nudge to get us off the couch and into the kitchen to meal prep so that way we have some peace of mind during the week to be honest with you but other than that I think that's all I have for you guys I hope you have a fabulous yet safe happy new year and I am going to be praying for you your family and your country like always Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. And don't forget to go out there and make today even better than yesterday. And I will talk to you in my next video. Bye. On my own, but I don't know why. You hit the road, but you don't realize. I'm on the back when you're around. I won't think twice when